All right, hi guys, and welcome back to this week's episode of The Sounding Board, the video series where I take your questions and answer them. All right, so in this week's episode, we have a question from Errol Fernandez, and this was posted on the How to Mic Up a Church Choir video on uh, my YouTube channel. So a question, writes Errol, I've noticed that in our choir setup, we aren't really able to bring out the choir sound as, a, as much as individual voices. We're a small group of 8 to 10 members in total, sopranos, altos, and maybe tenors if they show up, and we share 3 to 4 SM58s between ourselves. Would you recommend we use the setup you've shown, i.e. a single condenser mic and a choir boom uh, stand miking two rows of singers. All right, so uh, it depends on what kind of sound you are looking for, right? And this in turn will be influenced by the kind of music that your church does as well as what the function of the choir is. Uh, in a traditional church, the function of the choir is to act um, almost as an extension of the congregation, right? The idea that you have a, a choir at the front that leads the congregation in worship. In a more contemporary setting where you have a separate uh, worship leader, they may fulfill that role and the choir may then be um, essentially a large group of backup singers, right? So that's something artistically that you'll have to decide. Now, if you go to the one mic setup, all right, uh, this will result in a more blended sound because the mixing occurs acoustically in the air rather than electronically at the mixer. So as a result, you'll have more reverb because the distance from the singers to the microphone is greater. This, however, means that you do not have the ability to balance the sound once it is captured by the mixer. So if you have a group where one singer is a lot louder than the others, or where one section is louder than the others, so you mentioned that you have eight to 10 people, uh, sometimes you have tenor, sometimes you don't. So, you know, do, do you wanna capture all the parts equally? That's something, again, that you'll have to think about. It often requires a greater commitment on the part of the singers if they are going to sound good with the single mic setup, all right? And sometimes if you are in a situation where your choir is very unbalanced, so say you have eight sopranos, eight altos, and only two tenors and two basses, typically the sopranos and altos are gonna be a lot louder, right? Just because there's more of them. So in a situation like that, you'll need to make adjustments to how the singers stand in relation to the microphone. But if you decide to use the one mic for the whole choir approach, um, remember that you'll need to stand in a configuration, either a rectangle or a wedge, all right? One of the mistakes that I see choirs making is they stand in a long line spread out and then they put the mic in the middle, right? And what happens there is that the singers in the middle are really loud and the singers on the ends are not picked up at all, right? Because they're so far away from that centrally placed microphone. So you have to stand in either a rectangle, two rows deep or a wedge, which is three rows deep. All right, and uh, ideally, you will also want to have some way of controlling the height of the second and third rows. Uh, one of the best resources for this sort of thing is a publication, an online publication by Sure, which is entitled Audio Systems Guide to Houses of Worship. Go and Google that and you'll find the link. It's on the Sure website. Uh, look at page 42. Page 42 has a couple of excellent diagrams, both in plan as well as in profile, showing you how to set up this kind of um, situation using one or two microphones for the whole choir. Now, if after you do this, you come to the conclusion that one microphone is not really working for us, either for reasons of balance or for reasons of just um, not wanting such a blended sound. 
A middle ground is to use one condenser mic per section, all right? Now, right now, you're using 58s, which are a dynamic microphone. Dynamic microphones typically work best when they are within one foot or 12 inches of their subject, okay? Remember, we're talking live sound here, right? With uh, loudspeakers in the same acoustic space as the microphones. Once you go over that, you tend to have really serious feedback issues, right? Just because you can't get enough gain before feedback in the system. Condenser microphones are typically more sensitive and they have a higher output than dynamic microphones, which means that you don't need so much gain at the mixer. Using one mic per section rather than one mic per singer or one mic for the whole choir means that you still have the ability to balance the sections against one another at the mixer. What I would do in this case is put the microphone on a stand and place the microphone maybe one to two feet in front of each section, right? This also means that you have greater flexibility in positioning the section. So if you are in a situation where your choir has to stand in a long line, then you can still work it out using four mic stands with four condenser microphones across the front of your choir. Um, another thing to bear in mind is as soon as you move away from the one mic per singer model, you cannot put the choir microphones into monitors that are in front of the choir. Very often, there'll be one or two monitors in front of the choir and these are used for the choir to hear whatever the accompanying instrument is. Typically, it's piano, but it can also be guitar or organ. These monitors cannot be used for the choir to hear themselves, all right? Because what will inevitably happen is you will get a lot of feedback because, again, the issue of the choir microphones being relatively distant from the singers, as soon as you put those mics into the monitors, you will have massive feedback issues almost guaranteed, okay? So again, remember, if you move to um, one mic per section, take the choir mics out of the monitors. If the singers then complain that they can't hear themselves, probably need to go back to one microphone per singer. If your choir is on stage with a loud drummer or a loud band, this may not work, right? Because they may need to have the monitors there just to hear themselves over the rest of the band. Yes, you can move the choir away from the drums, but you know, again here, we're getting into reorganizing the way your stage is set up, so that may not be ideal. All right, so Errol, I hope that this has been useful for you and um, do go and have a look at that publication, uh, Sure Audio Systems Guide to Houses of Worship. Really, really useful stuff in there. It's free from the Sure website, and I have sent many people to look at that over the years. So this has been Bruno Luce for GLB Productions. If you have questions, please get them into me, either on Facebook, on the comments section of any video, or via uh, my website, which is glbproductions.com. I always love hearing from my viewers and I'll do my best to answer your questions. All right, so until the next video, take care, God bless you, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.